the f*** is that? What is that, Private Pile? This unusual aircraft was formally called the SH Tandem, but has been referred to in documentation as the SH MAI, MAI Tandem, and the Tandem MAI, which is what War Thunder calls it. I'm just going to call it the Tandem for simplicity's sake. The basic idea behind this plane was to create a multi role aircraft capable of close air support and also being a competent fighter in air-to-air combat. To that end, the theory was that by having a second set of wings on the rear of the plane, it would allow a more even distribution of weight in the fuselage, and allow for a heavy gunner's turret to be carried in the back of the plane as a counterweight to the engine without disrupting the center of gravity. An innovative idea, to be sure, And it may look weird to us now, but at the time, these kind of experimental aircraft designs weren't especially uncommon. The plane was designed at the Moscow Aviation Institute, which is where it gets its name from, and three prototypes were built. The rear set of wings provided about 40% of the aircraft's total lift, and had combined ailerons and elevators, what we would now call elevons. Now, the first prototype was a simplified implementation of the design that was basically just intended to validate the layout and aerodynamics and kind of prove that the thing would fly at all. The second prototype was armed and included the tail turret. The performance ended up being pretty bad and resulted in serious rework and a large number of modifications being incorporated into the third prototype. The performance of the third prototype was improved over the second, but Overall, it just didn't demonstrate a meaningful increase in performance over more conventional designs, and its payload was too limited for serious ground attack duties. The project was abandoned with no further aircraft being built. What we get in War Thunder is the Tandem MAI. This is a Rank 1 strike aircraft at battle rating 2.0, and is a very rare premium plane in the Soviet air trade. Your main armament is a set of four Shkas machine guns, which, if I'm being honest, are some of my favorite weapons in the game. The rate of fire is insane, and you get 2,400 rounds of ammunition for them. The ammo belts are a pretty basic selection of low-caliber gun belts, and my personal preference for the Shkas is always the tracer belt. These have a good tendency to start fires, And frankly, when I'm firing the Shkas at some other plane, I want them to know about it. The tracers are for them, not for me. For loadouts, the Tandem can take two light bombs in differing sizes, but really, both options are pretty small, and neither one's going to do too much damage. The good news is, the plane gets a bomb sight, so that's not nothing, and you can at least place those two wimpy bombs very accurately. Additionally, the plane does have a tail gunner. As crazy as it might seem, the tail gunner also has a schkas and a pretty good field of fire horizontally and above the plane. The tandem's flight performance is kind of weird. The plane doesn't climb well unless you get your speed up over about 350 kilometers an hour or so. Its low speed maneuverability is complete trash, at least in realistic battles and its horizontal stability sometimes wanders a little bit. However, the plane is a bit more aerobatic at higher speeds, it doesn't stall very easily, and it recovers pretty fast. It doesn't retain energy well in most maneuvers, but the acceleration isn't terrible in level flight. It turns out that a plane with two sets of tandem wings and a weird center of gravity has really atypical flight performance. Who knew? Flying this oddball out into air battles really can be a lot of fun, as the four Shkas really do give this plane an enormous amount of firepower for low-tier combat. If you can get a couple of seconds on a target, it's probably going to catch fire, lose its pilot, or just explode. 
the tail gunner will occasionally get kills, since most of the stuff attacking you is going to be pretty flimsy. It's more gimmick than game changer, but it's fun when it happens. Now, in arcade battles, if you upgrade your crew, which you should do because it's super cheap in a low tier plane like this, you can get a five second mid air reload on your Shkas. So, basically, infinite ammo without any real downtime. The bombs, well, they're not really strong enough to do much damage, but they do give the plane the potential for attacks of opportunity on light ground targets. And, you know, in rank one, you will occasionally get stuff with them. In realistic battles, I usually try to side climb out and head in the general direction of enemy bases, sometimes intercepting a bomber first if the opportunity presents itself. I'll usually drop the two bombs onto a base before going in for air combat, but if you want, you can skip the bomb loadout and just fly up empty if you want a slightly better rate of climb. Sometimes in RB, where the flight model's a bit tighter, I'll just tag someone with the Shkas as I fly by, but just keep going and decline turning in for an engagement. Occasionally, it's better to just take the assist than to get shot down by a P-40 or some other plane that can just totally outturn you. The silver lining, though, the gun turret. That rear gunner will occasionally do good work, and it's kind of hard not to smile when he gets a kill for you. Flying the plane out in a close air support is actually really fun. The plane is one of the smallest aircraft in the game to get a bombsight view, so you can use it to get pretty accurate bomb drops without being a huge target yourself like would be the case with a bomber. Now, the bombs are small and wimpy, so you won't be racking up lots of kills, but... Personally, I have a really good time flying this one out into ground battles. Visually, all right, what do I say here? This is one of the weirdest looking aircraft in the entire game. The tandem wings and the split vertical stabilizers give this plane a really oddball look. At first, I thought this thing was just fugly beyond all hope. I'll admit that over time, it kind of grew on me. You get two paint jobs, a green one and a white one, and for my two cents, the white one looks a lot better. Landing the tandem is pretty easy. Since the plane's center of gravity is so far back, you can just lock up the brakes as soon as it lands with no worries at all about flipping the nose over. And that really leads to a pretty short landing run compared to a lot of other fighters. Now, as long as you keep the wings level on final approach, your glide slope is going to be really easy to manage, and despite its weird handling in flight, the landing profile is actually very simple. Now, the cockpit for this plane is surprisingly good. The visibility is decent, the gun sight is really easy to use, and the instruments are obvious. The rearward visibility is at least average, uh, and overall, I'd rate this as a pretty good cockpit. To close out on the Tandem MAI. This plane is very well armed for a rank one aircraft. It's got a tail gunner that will occasionally shoot people off of your six. It has a bombsight view, it's a pretty small target, so it can actually be difficult to shoot these things down. And it's a strike aircraft, so it gets an air spawn in RB. However, the overall maneuverability is a little below average at most airspeeds. And it's got a very light bomb load overall. The final verdict on the Tandem MAI is that this plane is actually a pretty capable fighter that can deliver far more accurate bomb drops than most other planes at rank 1, other than, you know, dedicated bombers. This really is one of the funnest planes in rank 1 for any nation in War Thunder, and there's a lot of amusement value knowing that the kill cam is going to leave people wondering what on earth just shot them down. As always, thanks for watching.
Thank you.